I want to take a second to share with you this finding that Google released, and it's revolving around how we buy and make decisions, which obviously Google is one of the largest search engines in the world. They have access to a lot of our data, and it's cool that they finally put it together and <laughs> gave it back to us in some way, like, hey, this is what you guys are doing. This is how you're buying. So the first point was seven hours of research goes into making a purchasing decision. This could be reading blog posts, comparing products, watching videos, right? The next number was 11 different touch points. Now touch points could mean an ad hitting you in the face. It could be a social post that came up on your feed. It could be a video that you watched. It could be an email that lands in your inbox. So touch points are all of the different interactions that they might have with you and your content. The last one I found fascinating, which is four different locations. So this is basically if you are consuming primarily on Instagram, let's say, but then eventually you get that person to sign up for the newsletter, or they're also now listening to your podcast or YouTube. The more platforms that they are actually consuming you on or the different places increases the likelihood that that person's actually going to you know, push over the edge and make the purchasing decision. And so then it allows me the freedom to go, okay, let me let go of that. If I do have 11 different touch points to think about, right, I'm not going to overvalue this one. I'm going to think about the total body of work. Do I even have 11 pieces of content that could be those touch points? If someone did seven hours of research, do I have podcasts, right, that allow that time to go by quicker so it's not 15 seconds at a time on Instagram or TikTok? It forces you to think about these bigger things in your content strategy. I heard somebody say the other day that when somebody comes into their owned media, it takes 90 to 120 days before that sale or conversion happens. So for some others in some other markets, it's a year, right? Somebody might come into your system and they're there for a full year before they're actually like, okay, I'm going to pull the trigger. Let's do this, right? So knowing that gives you patience. You don't have to sell everybody on the first day, on the first interaction, the first time they read your stuff. You can take your time. So it's really cool how each of these numbers, each of these categories, the research, the touch points, and the different locations, they all force something sharper in our content strategies, right? So we've been hearing for years, people talk about repurposing content on different platforms, right? Put this on TikTok, but also put it on Instagram. You know, if it's a video, also turn it into a podcast. If it's a podcast, you know, make it a newsletter as well. And there's, it is easier said than done to do all of that. But it goes to show you why, why have we been saying to do that? And it's because of this, because you never know where someone's going to be when they consume that piece of content. It might be the exact same thing, right, on TikTok and Instagram. But who knows, this person might prefer being on TikTok, and that is where they happen to be when that fourth location was hit, or that 11th touch point was hit. So anyways, I hope this was useful in helping you craft your own content strategy and also helping to relieve uh, and reset some of the expectations that you might have around conversions and especially content driving those conversions. If you are on your own long form content journey, check out some of the free stuff that I have in the description below or on mizhq.com. That's M-I-Z-H-Q.com. Thanks for hanging out. See you next time.